Hey, what's up, chemistry people? It is Mr. Boylan, and today we are going to use the law of conservation of mass to write chemical equations. If we break that down a little bit, we are going to first list four observations that a chemical reaction or chemical change has taken place. Two, we're gonna list three requirements for a correctly written chemical equation. Three, we are then going to write chemical equations given formulas of compounds. And four, we are going to write chemical equation given names of compounds. So, lots of nomenclature, that's never going away. Lots of fun, also never going away. All right, so first things first, there are four easily observed changes that usually indicate that a chemical reaction has occurred. First, the production of heat and or light. So temperature changes are really good indicators as you've got a chemical change. If light is being given off as the reaction occurs, really good indication of a chemical change. Let's take a quick look at this sample chemical reaction where we burn a strip of magnesium ribbon. Uh, lots of light is being given off in the process. Also, large amounts of energy, although you probably cannot feel it from where you're at right now. Two, the production of a gas. Now, here's a thriller of a video in which metal is reacting with two different kinds of acids. In each case, though, large amounts of gases are produced, indicated by the bubbles that you see in those beakers there. Not to be confused with changes of state, which is a physical change. Third thing we're going to look for to let us know we've got a chemical change is the formation of what's called a precipitate, which is a really fancy chemistry name for a solid, that is produced as a result of a chemical reaction in solution and that separates from the solution. So we're looking for the formation of a solid. Now this one can be a little tricky for folks, but as you take a look at your screen, we've got two aqueous solutions, a chemical here, a second chemical here. We mix them together. Boom, this is your precipitate. It sort of looks like a milky nastiness that forms. Um, but if you let this settle, eventually you get a pile of solid here on the bottom, uh, a precipitate, AKA a solid. The fourth thing we're looking for, as you saw in that last uh, observation as well, is a change in color. These four observations are really great ways to let you know that the change that you have observed is a chemical change and not a physical change. Now, once we observe these chemical changes, we need to describe them in ways that are really easy, not only for us to understand, but our fellow chemists. Uh, we are gonna write then what are called chemical equations to properly summarize any chemical change. Uh, we do need to follow three requirements. <sighs> When writing chemical equations, first, you must include all known reactants and all known products. Seems easy enough, but you do have to be careful. Many times when you are doing reactions in open containers, you have byproducts that react with uh, the things that are in the air. Two, uh, your equation must also contain the correct formulas for your reactants and products. Uh, again, nomenclature is going to haunt you for the rest of your life. Nomenclature. Nomenclature. Also, don't forget your diatomic elements. Uh, when you're working with, for example, oxygen gas as a reactant or a product or hydrogen gas, you need to make sure that you include it as a diatomic element. And then three, our equation must follow the law of conservation of mass. Now, we'll talk a lot about this law in the coming days, but you should simply know at this point that the law states that mass or matter is neither created nor is it destroyed in ordinary chemical reactions. It's the law. Okay, and then lastly, chemical reactions can be described as a word or a formula equation. I personally prefer the formula equations. It's sort of like the texture format of chemical reactions. Keeps things short and sweet. Uh, as you take a look at your screen, you've got in yellow there, the formula format of the chemical reaction. Uh, beneath that in light green, you have the word format. Again, as you can tell there, the formula format is a lot easier, a lot quicker to write out than the word format is, but you have to be able to interpret what that formula format means. All right, so as we look at this, we have one mole of methane gas. Boom. 
Uh, now, you would not at this point in your chemistry career maybe know that this is called methane. That's a level of organic nomenclature that we haven't gotten to yet. Added to two moles of gaseous oxygen, boom, forms, forms, one mole of carbon dioxide gas, boom, and two moles of water vapor, boom. So you're gonna have to be able to translate between the formula format and the word format and recognize what that formula equation is telling you. You will also need to be able to do that in reverse. So as you look uh, at the top of your screen there, we're given the word format for a chemical change. It says an electric current is run through two moles of liquid water and produces two moles of hydrogen gas and one mole of oxygen gas. So take a quick moment, look at the word equation, compare it to the formula equation, pause the video if you need to. Okay, now you may be wondering uh, how I was able to translate so easily between those word and formula equations. Well, one, I am a genius. Two, there are some symbols that are used to help uh, me better understand what's going on in that formula equation. And some of those symbols that are really gonna help you out and you need to be familiar with is anytime you see that arrow, uh, we're talking yields or forms or produces or makes, uh, something to let us know we're going from reactants to the products. S in parentheses for solid, L for liquid, G for gas, AQ for aqueous, which means dissolved in water, which we'll talk a lot about. But basically, as we look at these symbols, it's really important to recognize your states of matter and be able to describe that not only in words, but also in your formula equation. Now, additionally, sometimes you'll see things that are written above the arrows in your chemical equations. This is just to give additional information to the person who is observing your chemical reaction, chemical change, to remind you what's going on. Uh, for example, many times we have to add heat uh, in order to get the reactants to react with one another. Sometimes we use what's called a catalyst. The catalyst itself does not undergo permanent chemical change. However, it's an important piece of information to include in your chemical reaction because it's telling us that we're adding something to speed that reaction up. You'll also see this Greek letter delta above the arrow indicating continuous heat. And I've provided a few links here if you wanna go back and watch any of those YouTube videos in terms of uh, observing those different types of chemical change.